As a nurse, you want to be familiar with heart blocks. And the reason heart blocks occur in the heart is because there is some type of block in the electrical conduction system. Now, there's various types of heart blocks you want to be familiar with. And these types include first degree heart block, second degree heart block, and there's a couple of these. There's a second degree type one, which has several names. It's sometimes referred to as Mobitz type one or Winkybock. And then we have second degree type two, which is sometimes referred to as Mobitz type two. And then lastly, we have the complete heart block, which is referred to sometimes as third degree heart block. So first, let's take a look at first degree heart blocks. So whenever you go to analyze this rhythm, you may think at first that you have some type of sinus rhythm. But whenever you take a closer peek, you will see that it has a subtle little secret. It actually has something up with its PR intervals. The PR intervals will be long, hence they will be lengthened. And with this rhythm, the PR interval will be greater than 0.20 seconds, and this will occur regularly throughout the rhythm. And the reason that this is occurring is because electrical signal is able to go down through the atria to the ventricles, so you get the P wave and the QRS complex, but it is doing this slowly through that AV node, which creates that longer PR interval. So what are some characteristics and criteria this rhythm must have in order to be a first degree heart block? Well, whenever you look at this rhythm, it's going to look very similar to normal sinus rhythm. The P waves are going to be normal. The rhythm of the P waves, which looks at our atrial rate, will be regular. It can have a rate between 60 to 100 beats per minute. And then sometimes these rhythms can be a little bit slower. So you may see sinus bradycardia with a first degree AV block. In addition, the QRS complex is going to be normal. It's going to measure less than 0.12 seconds. And the QRS complex represented our ventricular rate, so our ventricular rate can be anywhere between 60 to 100 beats per minute or slightly slower, and it's going to be regular. In addition, you're going to have a normal QT interval, but when you go to measure the PR interval, it is going to be prolonged. It is going to be greater than 0.20 seconds. And as you can see with this rhythm here, we have a prolonged PR interval. That is the only difference between this and a sinus rhythm is this interval. Now to help you remember this heart block from all the other heart blocks you have to know, remember we are dealing with first degree heart block. First means one, so we're dealing with really one big problem with this rhythm. We have a prolonged PR interval that is occurring regularly throughout the rhythm. Now, what causes first degree AV heart blocks? Well, this can actually be normal in some patients and we'll continue to monitor it. It can also be caused by a myocardial infarction or certain medications such as calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, and digoxin. Now, what is the treatment for a first degree heart block? Well, typically patients don't have signs and symptoms with this type of rhythm. And usually the only reason we know that a patient's in a first degree heart block is because they had a routine EKG where we could actually see it, or we put them on a heart monitor and we could see the rhythm and see that prolonged PR interval. So we'll just continue to monitor them, make sure they don't advance to another type of heart block or another type of abnormal rhythm. And if the patient has an extensive heart history, they may need to be further evaluated by a cardiologist. Plus, let's say they're on some type of medication that can do this that I listed earlier. Well, those medications may need to be adjusted and this heart rhythm may resolve itself. Next, let's look at second degree type one heart blocks, also known as Mobitz type one or Winky box. Now, the reason that this rhythm is occurring is because the electrical signal that's going from the atria to the ventricles is getting progressively slower until it doesn't really stimulate the ventricles to contract hence produce a QRS complex. So all of a sudden we will drop a QRS complex. Therefore, the key to help you really understand this heart block from all the other types of heart blocks is that that PR interval is going to gradually start lengthening. So whenever you look at that rhythm, you're gonna notice that the P wave is getting further and further away from the QRS complex. And then all of a sudden there's a P wave, but a missing QRS complex. And then the cycle is just gonna repeat itself again. Therefore, whenever we look at the characteristics and criteria for this to be a second degree type 1 heart block, you're going to see normal looking P waves. And the P waves tell us about the atrial rate and atrial rhythm. So the atrial rate will be normal, the rhythm will be regular, but the hallmark is that we're going to have gradually longer PR intervals until we don't have a QRS complex behind 
a P wave and this cycle will repeat itself again. So whenever you do see those QRS complexes, they will look normal and they will measure less than 0.12 seconds, but some of those will be gone. And because of that, the ventricular rhythm will be irregular and the ventricular rate will be slightly slower than the atrial rate. Now, what can cause this type of heart block? Well, a myocardial infarction can, especially an active MI that's affecting the inferior wall of the heart because it's causing acute ischemia that's depriving that heart tissue of that oxygen it needs to function. In addition, medications can do this like calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, digoxin, rheumatic fever, and increased vagal tone. Now, how is a second degree type one treated? Well, first of all, you want to assess your patient and see if they're having any symptoms. If they're not, you wanna to continue to monitor them and a cardiologist may be consulted just to further evaluate the patient. Sometimes they need medication stop that slow that AV conduction system, such as the calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, digoxin, and that will help them. But you also wanna evaluate your patient, make sure that they're not having a heart attack and MI. And if they are, they need treatment immediately. Now, let's say your patient is having symptoms. They're presenting with signs and symptoms that shows you that they're having low cardiac output, that it's falling. The heart's not able to pump blood and maintain itself. So the patient's having mental status changes. They have a really weak pulse. Their blood pressure is severely low. They're pale. They're dizzy. All that's telling you, hey, my patient is not perfusing fast. Something's wrong. So with this, you want to activate the emergency response system wherever you're at. And with this, sometimes what will be ordered is atropine or temporary pacing. Now let's look at second degree type 2, which is also known as Mobitz type 2. So the reason that this rhythm is occurring is because electrical conduction system is not sending a steady signal from the atria to the ventricles, because whenever it normally does that, we get a P wave followed by a QRS complex. And because that signal is not steady, we're going to actually lose that QRS complex. Therefore, what you want to remember is that the PR interval does not progressively get longer and longer, and then all of a sudden we drop a QRS QRS complex. That happens in second degree type 1. In second degree type 2, that PR interval is going to stay constant, meaning it's going to stay the same throughout that rhythm. And then we will lose a QRS complex at some point. So whenever you look at the characteristics and criteria for this rhythm, you'll see the following. The atrial rate will be normal, 60 to 100 beats per minute, and the rhythm will be regular. That PR interval is going to be constant. It's going to stay the same and the PR interval can actually be normal or it could be prolonged now the ventricle rate will be slower less than 60 beats per minute and the reason for this is because we're missing some QRS complexes sometimes which throws off our ventricular rate and the rhythm of the ventricular rate will be irregular again because we're missing some complexes now whenever you do see the QRS complexes sometimes they can be wide greater than 0.12 seconds or narrow less than 0.12 seconds and and this depends really on where that block signal is within that conduction system. Now, what are some causes of this type of heart block? Well, an active myocardial infarction can cause this, especially one that's affecting the anterior wall of the heart. Advanced coronary artery disease, followed by any type of structural damage to the electrical conduction system, and then medications that slow the AV conduction system, such as calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, digoxin, and so forth. Now, what is the treatment for this type of heart block? With this type of heart block, it is considered worse than the second degree type one that we discussed earlier. And the reason for this is because our ventricular ray is on the slower side. And when we slow down the ventricular ray, it affects how much blood our heart can pump to our body and keep us alive. Therefore, it lowers cardiac output. And because of this, the patient is more likely to have symptoms with this rhythm. So if a patient does have symptoms that correlate with low cardiac output, like low blood pressure, weak pulse, they're getting cold, sweating, mental status changes, they need treatment. So some treatment includes temporary pacing and then insertion of a permanent pacemaker. Now, sometimes patients do have this rhythm, that ventricular rate is able to maintain their cardiac output, so they don't really have symptoms. So if that's the case, we would monitor them closely and consult with cardiology for further evaluation. That may include stopping certain medications to help with that AV conduction. Now, lastly, let's look at complete heart blocks, also known as third degree heart blocks. This 
This type of heart block is the worst of all blocks. And the reason it's occurring is because electrical signal from the atria isn't making it to the ventricles. Because normally, remember, whenever the atria contract, it creates the P wave. And then right after that, we have ventricular contraction, which creates the QRS complex. So on an EKG strip, you should have P wave, QRS complex, P wave, QRS complex. And that shows you that signals traveling from the atria to the ventricles causing contraction. And it's working so well together. But here in this rhythm, you're gonna have P waves and QRS complexes that aren't collaborating, hence working together. They're really independent of each other. So over here, there'll be some P waves that are doing their own thing. And then QRS complexes who are doing their own thing. Therefore, whenever we're looking at the characteristics and criteria to determine if this is a third degree heart block, you're gonna to see the following. Regular P waves making that atrial rhythm regular and its rate normal and the QRS complexes will be regular making the ventricular rhythm regular but there will be less of those QRS complexes than P waves. So the ventricular rate will be slower than the atrial rate. Now it's important to know that the ventricular rate can be 40 or less depending on what structure is firing for the ventricles causing it to contract. And when you measure those QRS complexes the width can vary depending on what structure is firing. So they can be narrow or wide, so greater or less than 0.12 seconds. In addition, you can have variable PR intervals because again, the P wave and the QRS complexes are independent. Now what could cause this type of heart block? Well, the person could be born with it, so it could be congenital, or the person has severe heart disease, or they have a myocardial infarction, or they're taking some type of medication that they became toxic on, like digoxin, or they have structural damage to their heart that's affecting the electrical conduction system, or there is a heart valve problem. Now, what is the treatment for a third degree heart block? Well, with this, your patient's usually gonna have some signs and symptoms because whenever the heart is beating like this, those ventricles and atria, they're really being independent of each other, it's not gonna perfuse your body. So you're gonna have a low cardiac output, which you can present with a low blood pressure, weak pulse, mental status changes. That patient just doesn't look good. They're pale, they're cold, they're clammy. All of that's telling you, hey, that heart is not pumping enough blood throughout the body to keep it alive and this could progress to death. So what you wanna do is you wanna activate that emergency response system. And this will get a team in the room to help you. Now some treatment that can be given to that patient is that atropine could be administered to help that heart pump more efficiently, or the patient could be connected to a temporary pacemaker, which will again, get that heart beating correctly so we can maintain cardiac output. And then eventually the patient will need a permanent pacemaker implanted. Okay, so that wraps up this review. And if you'd like to watch more videos in this series, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.